Senator Hirono, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you. It's good to be with you, Trevor. You are what many people would term a trailblazer because no matter what you're doing in life, it is oftentimes referred to as a first. You're often a first in a position, whether it's the first woman assuming that position or the first Asian American assuming that position. You are oftentimes breaking down barriers, whether it's in the House of Representatives or as a Lieutenant Governor or now as the Senator of Hawaii. What does it feel like to constantly be breaking new ground and not having people to look for to inspire you? Or do you find people who are not in your career to inspire you to do these things? Oh, yes, there, there are a lot of people. My mother is the main inspiration because uh, she was a courageous risk taker who completely changed my life by bringing me to this country. Not very many people can point to one person who did that. And so uh, uh, I have her to look, look to for so much of what I do and how I do it. You wrote a beautiful book about your story, how your mother brought you here and basically fought to set up a life for yourself. Um, and your family. Did you know from the onset that this was going to be a book about your mother and her journey? Or, or were you surprised as you were writing it about how much she did to set you up to have the life that you have today? Oh, I've known for a long time that uh, this is a book that I would dedicate to her. And that is why I wrote it because she has suffered two strokes, wasn't able to tell her story. And I, I, I just thought she was such an extraordinary person that I wanted to do this to dedicate to her. And I did. You know, when I, when I first got to America, one of the things I knew about Hawaii was that every, they, everyone was just chill. And I remember when I went to Hawaii, I was like, this is one of the most chilled, amazing places I've ever been. You Pretty know, laid like, back. Yeah, the, like, even the, like even the weatherman is wearing like, you know, he's got like a Hawaiian shirt. He's very much like, ah, the weather. It's always the weather. It's good times, you know? It's just got that feeling. But, but don't worry, we can still think and wear casual clothes. Oh, the- yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm in Team Hawaii now. I mean, like, oh, there you I'm, go. I'm making my shirt and hoodie. You I know? see I that. But, but I think a lot of people would be proud to say that, yes, Hawaiians are chilled, but Hawaii also has one of the most fierce senators who is willing to fight for people's rights that she believes in. There were, there were a few issues that I would love to talk to you about that I feel like are really complicated and you have a nuanced view on. One of those issues was in, um, in a measure that Ted Cruz brought forward. And I mean, I know Ted Cruz is always trying to troll people. We're well aware of that on this show. Good word. Um, but but what, what he did was very slick in trying to harness the feeling that many Asian American communities feel in that they feel like they're being excluded from going to universities because universities have certain quotas or systems that they use to infuse um, diversity into the school. All the Democrats voted against it. Ted Cruz was like, you see, they don't like Asians. They, the, the, the Democrats just want to do this for some minorities and not others. You said this was a cynical attempt by Ted Cruz to try and create, really, a fight amongst people. Talk me through that initiative and what you think colleges and universities can do to be as inclusive as possible whilst not making other people feel like they're not in or in because of the color of their skin. I said discrimination on the basis of race for an emissions policy is already illegal. I know that there's a bunch of Yale Asian law students who got uh, the uh, Trump administration to uh, follow a follow lawsuit or something. And, and so this is not pitting one group of minorities against another. For Ted Cruz to use that uh, example as somehow he's standing with the Asian American Pacific Islanders is such BS, you know? So uh, this is, that, that's Ted. And in fact, just today, we had another markup in the Judiciary Committee. I had a very simple bill uh, that would just uh, collect more information about who gets patents in our countries because women, minorities, do not. We need to get the data. And he tried to change that. He tried to put in an amendment. And he says to me, I don't know why you don't like my amendment. Are you saying that it's burdensome? I said, it's not necessary. I said, there's a difference. (laughs) He didn't say anything after that. But uh, this is, uh, look, Let's just be clear on what it is that we want this bill to do. And and his amendment was a distraction. He does that all the time. I'm glad that he, at the end, voted for the bill, 94 to 1. And there was one outlier Republican, which is seeing a lot for the Republicans who didn't vote for it. And the less said about that guy, the better. You have to work with these people. And, you know, the Democrats have a slim majority to work with. Do the Democrats have an idea of how to actually get things done if it's really just always going to be split down the middle, nobody moves? 
Mitch McConnell's goal in life is to retake the Senate, which means that he's not going to be uh, trying to help Joe Biden achieve his big programs that help Americans. And he's not about to help all the Senate Democrats achieve our goals either. So we start with that proposition, which means that we're not going to get a lot done unless we face up to the need for filibuster reform. I would like to get rid of filibuster or we're going to have to use some of the process like reconciliation to pass some of these really big bills that are needed. <laughs> Previously, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like in the past, you were one of the Democrats who said the filibuster needed to be protected. You know, yes. a lot of Democrats said the filibuster needs to be protected so that the minority always has a say in, in which laws are being passed. Do you not worry about the inconsistency in that message, or is there something that people may be missing? Oh, you know, a consistency is a goblin of little minds. So I've learned watching Mitch McConnell over the last four years, he hardly ever gave the Democrats much chance to exercise our uh, 60 votes uh, to deny him the 60 votes because he would rarely put out any substantive legislation in his busyness to get as many ideologically oriented people onto the courts for lifetime appointments or passing the 1.5 trillion in tax cuts. You think that, well, the filibuster protects minority voices, but notice we were in the minority for four years and we basically got shafted at every turn. So I learned from that. And uh, also that the filibuster is a vestige of uh, the Jim Crow days. And so uh, we need to move on away from this rule that's not even anything that is in law or in the Constitution. Mm. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an honest uh, take to have. And, and I think a, a wonderful note to end on is a lawmaker in America saying, hey, look, I'm willing to change my mind as time progresses. Senator Hirono, thank you so much for joining me on the show. And uh, good luck. My pleasure. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha.